see. I didn't know about the CIB and the Bronze Star, Prentice said. Where'd he get those? I saw the Bronze Star citation. It says he distinguished himself while engaged in intensive combat action of a clandestine and covert nature. I guess he got the CIB and the Second Purple Heart from the same place. That's all it said, Prentice asked. God only knows what McNabb did over there. All of it overt and clandestine. He came out of that war, and you know how long it lasted. It took me longer to walk out of Cambodia. With a Distinguished Service Medal, a Purple Heart, a star for his CIB, and a star that most people never thought he'd get. Anyway, when Charlie got to Greg, McNabb quickly took the wind out of his sails. I'd like to know how he managed to do that, Beth said sweetly. Kowalski gave her a look that was half curiosity and half frown, then went on. When I heard Charlie was at Bragg, I went to see him the first time. He wasn't in McNabb's office, he was out in the boonies at Camp McCall taking green beanie qualification training, eating snakes and all that crap, you know. And before that, McNabb had sent him to jump school. That'll take the wind out of anybody's sails. I thought he was General McNabb's aide. Oh, he was, but first he had to go to Benning and McComb. Then, as an aide, McNabb really ran his ass ragged. What he was doing, of course, was training him, but Charlie didn't know that. He decided that God really didn't like him after all, that the fickle finger of fate had got him, that he was working for one mean son of a bitch. He told me that when his tour as an aide was up, it was sayonara special forces back to aviation for him. McNabb was, of course, one, two jumps ahead of him. I was up there to see Charlie maybe two, three months ago on a, quote, blue flight cross-country exercise, end quote. McNabb sent for me, told me the conversation was private, and asked me what I thought of the 160. The Special Forces Aviation Regiment? Beth asked. Kowalski nodded. Special Operations Aviation Regiment. Sore. I told him what I thought, which is that it's pretty good, and I would much rather be at Campbell flying with the Night Stalkers than teaching field grade officers to fly here. He said he thought it would be just the place for Charlie to go when his aid tour was up. I told him I didn't think that with as little time as Charlie had, either total hours or in the Army, they'd take him. He said, what he was thinking of doing was sending Charlie over here for a blue flight transition into the King Air, which he already knew how to fly. And what could be done while he was here to train him in something else, something that would appeal to the 160. He said he knew two people who were going to have a quiet word in the year of whoever selected people for the 160th, saying that they'd flown with him in combat and thought he could make it in the 160. Then, he pointed to me and him, and he said, If I hear you told him, or even if he finds out about this, I will shoot you in both knees with a 22 hollow point. Kowalski laughed. <laughs> McNabb really likes Charlie. They're two of a kind. So what are you doing for him here? Prentice asked. If it's got wings or rotary, 